following his challenging first-round submission loss to Kamzat Chimaev at UFC 308, Robert Whitaker provided fans with a health update, acknowledging the setback and sharing insight into his future plans. Whitaker, widely known for his resilience and professionalism, took to Instagram to address both his supporters and the broader MMA community, confirming the injury that had affected him during the fight and expressing gratitude for the overwhelming support he's received. The co-main event loss to Chimaev was surprising not because of the outcome. Chimaev entered the fight as a heavy favorite, but because of how quickly Whitaker was submitted. Fans and analysts were left wondering if an injury had played a role in the former champion's early tap. It was later revealed that Whitaker had indeed sustained a jaw injury in the octagon, likely affecting his ability to defend himself during the decisive moments of the fight. Whitaker's Instagram post conveyed his typical humility and humor. Thank you everyone for all the love and support, he began. It's a tough gig sometimes, but that's the business. He extended his congratulations to Chimaev, stating, big congratulations to Kamzat. He was the better man tonight, and that's all there is to it. Whitaker went on to emphasize that he had felt physically and mentally prepared for the fight, saying, I felt great, everything was on point, and I was ready. However, his jaw injury clearly impacted his performance, with Whitaker lightheartedly adding, My jaw is good, but my teeth were moved in. It's a good excuse to fix them properly now. For Whitaker, who is well acquainted with the challenges of the fight game, this loss is only a temporary setback. I'm disappointed, but I come back better from every setback and every challenge, so this is no different, he stated, reflecting his enduring determination and commitment to growth. Over the years, Whitaker has proven to be one of the most resilient figures in the middleweight division, rebounding from defeats and injuries to consistently rank among the top contenders. His ability to bounce back has become a defining characteristic of his career, and this loss, he assured his fans, will follow that pattern. This latest health update also highlighted that Whitaker will require medical attention before considering a return to competition. Given his injury, he will likely take some time to recuperate, but fans can be confident that Whitaker, known for his strong work ethic and dedication, will use this time to prepare for his next opportunity. Time to go spend time with the family for a bit, he said, indicating his intention to take a brief hiatus to focus on recovery and his loved ones before planning his comeback. While Whitaker's age has become a point of conversation, he recently mentioned in an interview with Michael Bisping that he might consider retiring at age 36, a milestone he will reach in about two years. Although time may be a factor, Whitaker remains one of the UFC's most experienced and strategic fighters, and his popularity among fans underscores his place as a mainstay in the sport. His career has been a story of resilience and adaptation, evolving from his early years to become a respected figure not only in the middleweight division but in the sport at large. This loss may be a setback, but Whitaker's optimism and grit suggest he has no intention of stepping away from the cage just yet. The fan-favorite fighter seems poised for one more title run, and with his wealth of experience, determination, and skill, he remains a formidable presence. Fans and analysts alike will be eagerly watching as Whitaker regroups, recovers, and eventually returns to continue his journey. Whitaker's fans know him as Bobby Knuckles, a fighter who never shies away from a challenge, and there's no doubt that he will look to bounce back stronger. The middleweight division, packed with rising talent and new rivalries, remains an arena where Whitaker has thrived, and his potential to return for another title run keeps his story compelling. Incumbent middleweight champion Drykus Duplessis has set his sights on a high-stakes clash with Kamzat Chimaev, vowing to become the first fighter to hand the undefeated Chechen his first professional loss. Following Chimaev's dominant first-round submission win over former middleweight champion Robert Whitaker at UFC 308 in Abu Dhabi, Duplessis expressed both admiration for Whitaker and determination to take Chimaev's zero. Chimaev's swift submission of Whitaker shocked fans as he applied a brutal face crank, reportedly causing Whitaker's fractured jaw and displacement of teeth. The victory not only extended Chimaev's unbeaten streak to 14-0 but underscored his status as one of the most dangerous fighters in the middleweight division. 
With his eyes now fixed on the title, Chimaev confidently called out Duplessis, anticipating that he could dethrone the current champion with ease. Responding to the callout, Duplessis was quick to acknowledge Chimaev's impressive performance while also confidently declaring his intent to hand Chimaev his first defeat. In a social media post, he extended empathy to Whitaker, writing, Feel really sorry for Rob. He looked super ready but this is the fight game. Well done on a good performance. He then set his sights firmly on Chimaev saying, Kamzat, that being said, I can't wait to take your zero. Duplessis's rise in the middleweight division has been remarkable. Back in August at UFC 305, he secured his position as champion with a stunning fourth-round submission victory over former two-time titleholder Israel Adesanya. Their heated rivalry drew massive attention, and Duplessis's ability to finish Adesanya established him as a formidable force in the division. Known for his aggressive grappling and power striking, Duplessis has rapidly become one of the most well-rounded threats in the division, making a matchup with the similarly unstoppable Chimaev all the more tantalizing. While Duplessis has a likely rematch with former champion Sean Strickland on the horizon, potentially set for the first quarter of next year, fans and analysts are already buzzing about the prospect of a title fight between him and Chimaev. A showdown between the two would feature a clash of styles and an undefeated record at stake. Chimaev's relentless wrestling and submission skills versus Duplessis's all-around prowess could make for one of the most anticipated title bouts in recent middleweight history. As both fighters continue to generate interest, UFC enthusiasts and analysts alike are waiting to see if Duplessis can fulfill his promise to be the first to conquer the Chechen phenom or if Chimaev's reign of terror will lead him straight to the top of the middleweight mountain. Conor McGregor's latest bold bet during UFC 308 once again showcased his love for high-stakes action in the spotlight, but this time, his ambitious wager didn't deliver the payout he'd envisioned. Known for his flashy lifestyle and massive bankroll, McGregor threw down a jaw-dropping $500,000 on Robert Whittaker and Max Holloway to win their bouts by knockout. Had this risky bet succeeded, it could have netted him an incredible $17 million, a prize that even McGregor, with his accumulated wealth and endorsements, would have appreciated. However, things didn't go his way, as both fighters lost their respective matches, leaving McGregor empty-handed. In the co-main event, Robert Whitaker went up against Kamzad Chimaev, an undefeated phenom and rising star in the middleweight division. McGregor's bet hinged on Whitaker defeating Chimaev by knockout, but Chimaev proved too overwhelming for the former middleweight champion. Chimaev's relentless grappling and submission skills were on full display as he locked in a submission and forced Whitaker to tap in the first round, a shocking end that shattered McGregor's hopes for the first half of his big bet. In the night's main event, McGregor put his faith in Max Holloway, hoping the featherweight legend would secure a knockout against Ilya Topuria. Holloway, known for his striking skills and durability, was entering this fight with a massive fanbase behind him and a hunger to reclaim the featherweight title he once held. Despite his impressive history and striking prowess, Holloway faced an equally skilled and powerful opponent in Topuria. After a hard-fought battle, Topuria ultimately bested Holloway, delivering a powerful third-round knockout that sealed the fight and dashed McGregor's hopes for the second half of his bet. Despite this loss, McGregor's playful and competitive spirit shines through, having amassed vast wealth from his illustrious MMA career, as well as lucrative ventures like his proper No 12 whiskey brand and various endorsement deals, the $500,000 loss is unlikely to phase him. However, this high-stakes bet, and his willingness to take big risks, show that McGregor's love for MMA and his competitive edge are still very much intact, even if he hasn't stepped into the cage since his trilogy fight with Dustin Poirier in 2021. McGregor's active involvement in the UFC, even from the sidelines, keeps fans and analysts speculating about his future. For many, his personality and larger-than-life presence bring excitement and unpredictability to the sport. He's still very much in the mix, connecting with MMA fans worldwide, whether he's making bold statements, 
betting on the outcomes of high-profile fights, or hinting at a potential comeback. And while McGregor has remained non-committal on whether he'll return to the octagon, his ongoing investment in the sport suggests that the possibility is far from off the table. A return to fighting would be monumental, reigniting his fierce rivalries and drawing immense attention from fans and media alike. But even if he chooses to continue his journey outside the cage, McGregor's ongoing passion for MMA, expressed through daring wagers like this one, proves he's still very much in the fight game, reminding everyone that his legacy remains tied to the sport he helped bring into the mainstream. Whether he bets big again or trains for a return, McGregor's presence in UFC is as thrilling as ever, keeping fans engaged in the MMA world on edge, eager to see what Notorious will do next. Following a high-stakes showdown against Ilya Topuria at UFC 308, Max Holloway may be considering a permanent move up to the lightweight division. The featherweight title bout, held at the Etihad Arena in Abu Dhabi, ended in a third-round knockout for Topuria, marking the first time Holloway had been finished in the octagon. Known for his durability and elite striking, Holloway's loss to Topuria has sparked speculation that, blessed, could be ready to embark on a fresh journey at 155 pounds. In the post-fight press conference, Holloway hinted at his interest in the lightweight division, indicating that the time might be right to explore new challenges in a higher weight class. He acknowledged that he had the best 145 cut here at UFC 308, emphasizing that his weight management went well. However, he also pondered the opportunities that a move up could offer. What else is there to do? Holloway said, I had a couple times to reclaim it, new guys coming up, yeah that'd be fun, but I think, 55 looks more fun. Holloway's enthusiasm for the lightweight division centers on the diverse roster of high-caliber opponents and compelling matchups available at 155 pounds. While he has competed twice before in this weight class, his previous attempts left mixed results. His first major bout at lightweight was a 2019 showdown for the interim title against Dustin Poirier, which ended in a decision loss. Despite the setback, he demonstrated the potential to hold his own at lightweight, absorbing Poirier's heavy punches while delivering an impressive volume of strikes. The second outing at lightweight saw Holloway in a remarkable fight against Justin Gaethje, where he secured a stunning last-second knockout. This victory showcased his ability to not only compete but thrive among the lightweight elite, giving fans a taste of what he could bring to the division. If Holloway does decide to move up, several potential matchups could reignite excitement among MMA fans. A rematch with Poirier could be a thrilling battle between two elite strikers who are more seasoned since their last encounter. A showdown with Justin Gaethje would be another highly anticipated option, given the excitement of their first meeting in Holloway's successful performance. Other intriguing possibilities include bouts with Charles Oliveira, who has recently reclaimed his contender status, or a fight against Michael Chandler, another powerful and dynamic striker. Each of these matchups offers Holloway the chance to further establish his name in a new division and test his skills against some of the sport's top fighters. In the coming weeks, Holloway will likely sit down with his team to discuss his options. Given his place in MMA history as a future Hall of Famer and one of the UFC's most entertaining fighters, his next steps will be watched closely by fans and analysts alike. As he considers a more permanent move to lightweight, Holloway's career path continues to reflect his commitment to seeking new challenges and pushing the limits of his potential in the UFC. After Ilya Topuria's stunning knockout victory over Max Holloway in the main event of UFC 308, all signs are pointing to a highly anticipated clash with former featherweight champion Alexander Volkanovsky. Topuria's impressive performance in the third round against Holloway not only solidified his status as the new king of the featherweight division but also set the stage for a potential rematch with Volkanovsky, who is eager to reclaim his title. 
Topuria first captured the featherweight championship from Volkanovski at UFC 298, delivering a decisive second-round knockout that left fans and pundits alike in awe. While this victory initially raised questions about whether a rematch was necessary, Volkanovski's legacy as one of the sport's all-time greats, characterized by his tenacity and willingness to take on any challenger, has made it clear that he deserves another shot at the belt. With five successful title defenses under his belt before losing to Topuria, Volkanovski has consistently proven himself to be a top contender in the UFC. UFC President Dana White underscored Volkanovski's significance to the promotion during the post-fight press conference, emphasizing that he is not just a former champion but a fighter who has always stepped up when the UFC needed him. Listen, Volkanovski is one of those guys, White stated, we're not going to say no to Volkanovski. He continued, highlighting the importance of Volkanovski's reputation. He's been that guy for us any time we needed him. When things don't go our way, and you've got to call a guy, Volkanovski has always been that guy. This sentiment was echoed by the audience, who would undoubtedly relish the opportunity to see these two elite fighters go head to head again. The mutual respect between Topuria and Volkanovski was evident when Volkanovski entered the cage after the fight. Topuria recognized Volkanovski's achievements and acknowledged his rightful place as the next contender. We're going to do it again, you deserve that, Topuria said. He defended his title I don't know how many times, if someone deserves it, it's him. Let's do it. This show of sportsmanship adds an exciting layer to the upcoming matchup, as both fighters are motivated not only by personal glory but also by the respect they hold for each other's skills and accomplishments. Now, the pressing question is where this electrifying rematch will take place. Topuria has expressed a strong desire to fight in his home country of Spain, where he could garner massive support from local fans. However, logistical challenges have made it difficult for the UFC to secure suitable venues for such a high-profile event. White has indicated that finding an appropriate location has been a challenge, which could push the promotion to consider alternative sites. One viable option is Australia, where the UFC is already scheduled to return in February for UFC 312. Volkanovski's roots in Australia, coupled with the potential for a massive audience, make this location a strong contender for the rematch. Fans are eagerly anticipating the announcement of the fight's venue, as the stakes are high, and both fighters are hungry to prove their supremacy in the octagon. As the MMA community gears up for this monumental clash, the narrative surrounding the fight is rich with potential storylines. Topuria will be defending his title against a man who has been a dominant force in the featherweight division for years. Meanwhile, Volkanovski will be seeking redemption, aiming to reclaim his status as champion and silence any doubters regarding his abilities after losing to Topuria. In summary, the impending matchup between Ilya Topuria and Alexander Volkanovsky is shaping up to be one of the most significant events in the featherweight division's history. With both fighters bringing their unique strengths and determination to the octagon, fans can expect a thrilling contest that could redefine the landscape of the division. Whether it takes place in Spain or Australia, one thing is clear. The world of MMA is buzzing with excitement for this highly anticipated rematch. At UFC 308, held in Abu Dhabi, the spotlight shone brightly on two fighters who delivered jaw-dropping performances, capturing the attention of fans and pundits alike, Kamzat Chimaev and Ilya Topuria. Both athletes were rewarded for their exceptional showings, with Dana White announcing during the post-fight press conference that they would each receive a $50,000 performance of the night bonus. The event was a roller coaster of emotions, showcasing the unpredictability and excitement that mixed martial arts can offer. Kamzat Chimaev's bout against Robert Whitaker was the co main event, and it did not disappoint. Chimaev displayed his grappling prowess in a stunning performance, submitting the former champion with a brutal face crank in just under three minutes. This victory not only extended his unbeaten streak to 14 fights but also made him the second fighter in UFC history to submit Whitaker. The last to achieve this feat was Jason Miller back in October 2011, a remarkable statistic that highlights Chimaev's rise in the middleweight division. 
The fight left Whitaker with a fractured jaw and damaged teeth, a testament to the ferocity of Chimaev's finishing move. Chimaev's submission of Whitaker is significant not just for the numbers but for the implications it carries in the middleweight title landscape. With his eye now firmly set on the championship belt, Chimaev has staked his claim as a legitimate contender. He called out Drykus du Plessis, the reigning champion, indicating that he envisions a title fight in his near future. In the main event, Ilya Topuria faced off against Max Holloway, a fighter renowned for his striking ability and heart. Topuria pulled off an astonishing third-round knockout, making him the first fighter ever to stop Holloway in this manner. Holloway's durability had been tested time and again throughout his illustrious career, but Topuria's striking precision and power proved too much on this occasion. The victory was especially sweet for Topuria, solidifying his status as a top contender in the featherweight division. Post-fight, Topuria was gracious in victory, acknowledging Holloway's greatness and expressing eagerness to continue proving himself against the best in the division. His knockout of Holloway not only earned him a performance bonus but also positioned him as a potential title challenger against Alexander Volkanovsky, the former champion. Volkanovsky's track record of defending his title multiple times makes the prospect of a rematch intriguing, especially given Topuria's current momentum. Another highlight of UFC 308 was the performance of Shara Magomedov, affectionately known as Shara Bullet. He opened the main card with an electrifying knockout of Armin Petrosian, employing a rare sequence of consecutive spinning backfists to secure the victory. This creative and unorthodox striking approach not only thrilled the audience but also showcased the depth of talent within the UFC's ranks. Magomedov's dynamic fighting style earned him a $50,000 bonus and marked him as a fighter to watch in the coming months. The Fight of the Night award went to a thrilling bout between Mateusz Rebecki and Mike Adibek Orlby, which served as a prime example of the heart and grit that fighters display in the octagon. This match was characterized by relentless action, with both athletes exchanging powerful strikes and grappling maneuvers over three grueling rounds. Ultimately, Rebecki won via split decision, but both competitors left the octagon battered yet proud, earning additional bonuses for their efforts. While the event was filled with celebrated performances, one fighter's exceptional display seemed to slip under the radar. Light heavyweight Ibo Alsan made headlines with his remarkable 51-second knockout of Rafael Cerquera, a result that typically would have garnered a performance of the night bonus. However, Dana White announced that, despite not receiving one of the traditional bonuses, Alsan would still be rewarded with a financial incentive, the specifics of which were not disclosed. This decision underscores the UFC's appreciation for standout performances, regardless of whether they fit neatly into the established bonus criteria. Marab, fresh off his bantamweight title win over Sean O'Malley at UFC 306, has voiced strong opinions about the future of the division, insisting that O'Malley deserves a rematch before Umar Nurmagomedov is considered for a title shot. While Nurmagomedov seemed like the obvious next contender after his recent dominant victory over Corey Sandhagen at UFC Abu Dhabi, Marab believes the division's storylines demand another showdown with O'Malley first. During a fan Q&A at UFC 308, Marab addressed speculation that he might be dodging Nurmagomedov, making it clear he's not the one avoiding fights. Where is this guy? He's taking another fight. He's scared. He's fighting somebody else, Marab said, adding that he doesn't choose his matchups. UFC President Dana White and UFC Chief Business Officer Hunter Campbell ultimately make those calls. If Dana White tells me I have to fight Umar, I'm fighting Umar, he explained. But Umar doesn't deserve to fight me yet. Sean O'Malley deserves a rematch, and I'm ready to fight him again. This debate over the next title shot stems from a perceived pecking order in the bantamweight division. Although Nurmagomedov's impressive win over Sandhagen solidified him as a top contender, Marab's desire to face O'Malley again hints at a rivalry he feels is unfinished. Their first fight, a competitive decision victory for Marab, saw O'Malley praised for his resilience and skill, setting the stage for a potentially lucrative and highly anticipated rematch. In the meantime, 
Reports indicate that Nurmagomedov and Song Yudong might be in talks for a potential matchup. Should that fight materialize, it could allow Nurmagomedov to further solidify his claim to the title, as Yudong is known for his explosive power and durability, making him a formidable opponent. For now, Mirab is focused on following his path as champion, stating his commitment to defending the belt and taking on the best challengers. After that, Umar will have to prove himself, and I'll be ready, he concluded, reinforcing his openness to any opponent Dana White ultimately selects. The ongoing feud between UFC president Dana White and PFL heavyweight champion Francis Ngannou has once again taken center stage in the media, with White recently issuing a series of pointed comments toward his former fighter. Their relationship has been contentious for years, marked by friction over contract negotiations and public disputes. Since Ngannou left the UFC for the Professional Fighters League earlier this year, that tension has only escalated, with both men trading increasingly harsh words. In his latest remarks, White downplayed the significance of Ngannou's departure and addressed claims that he lost out by not re-signing the heavyweight star. White seemed eager to turn the tables, suggesting instead that Ngannou and the PFL will face the brunt of any negative impact from the decision. I didn't lose anything, White stated. I was done with Francis. He actually owes me money because we had to watch that fight with him in the Black Beast. He should actually pay me back for that fight. Here, White referenced Ngannou's notoriously cautious 2018 fight with Lewis, which was widely criticized by fans for its lack of action. By bringing up this fight, White seemed to suggest that Ngannou wasn't the reliable, exciting draw he had expected. White also questioned the long-term financial benefits of Ngannou's decision to leave the UFC, arguing that the PFL may regret the terms of the contract they offered Ngannou. He continued, the only ones who are probably praying for his demise are the PFL, because they signed a shish contract with a guy that doesn't deliver any numbers in ticket sales or pay-per-views. They gotta keep paying this guy for however long, and good for him. Not good for them. In essence, White cast doubt on Ngannou's ability to generate revenue outside of the UFC, implying that his value may have been overestimated by the PFL. This isn't the first time White has expressed doubts about Ngannou's marketability. In the past, he's emphasized that while Ngannou may have achieved great success as a heavyweight, he believes that the UFC platform played a major role in building Ngannou's brand. Ngannou, for his part, hasn't shied away from responding to White's digs. He has openly criticized White for what he considers to be a pattern of disrespect and manipulation asserting that his decision to leave the UFC was about securing freedom and autonomy over his career rather than immediate financial gain. In one of his recent rebuttals, Ngannou called White a bully, highlighting the UFC president's history of publicly disparaging fighters with whom he's clashed. White further alluded to his disappointment in Ngannou's character, stating that his initial enthusiasm for Ngannou soured over time. I was all about Francis in the beginning, and then I found out who Francis was," White claimed. I told the two guys who asked me not to cut Francis, when someone shows you who they are, believe them. The tension between White and Ngannou highlights the power struggle within the world of combat sports, where fighters often seek greater control over their careers and earnings, while promoters aim to keep top talent under their umbrellas. With Ngannou's next moves in the PFL being closely watched by both fans and industry insiders, it's clear that this public dispute is far from over. White seems intent on minimizing the impact of Ngannou's departure, while Ngannou continues to frame it as a statement of his independence. As Ngannou's career progresses in the PFL, and he pursues other opportunities outside the UFC, fans will be watching to see if White's skepticism holds any weight or if Ngannou will ultimately prove his former boss wrong.